In this video, we're going to take a look at some simple trends in the periodic table and how the periodic table is organized. So by the end of this video, you will be able to explain the relationship between the position of an element in the periodic table and the structure of its atoms using Bohr Rutherford diagrams. So let's get into it. Let's start with introducing the current version of the periodic table. Now, the periodic table evolved from the one that was made by Dmitry Mendeleev. And what Mendeleev did is he kind of started with a bunch of data and noticed that groups of elements shared common physical and chemical properties. And we're going to get into this in a later um lesson, but just to kind of know that that's where he started. And he arranged the table by grouping elements with similar properties together in the same columns. And um, as he started doing that, there were still some gaps in the periodic table, according to his method of organization. But he kind of guessed like either those elements didn't exist or hadn't been discovered yet. And uh, he was, in fact, correct in that they hadn't been discovered yet. And so our current version um, has actually been completely filled in, whereas the first version has some gaps. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at three kind of simple trends here. We're going to look at the trend in atomic number the trend in atomic mass. And then most importantly, we're going to look at the trends in the valence electrons because that is going to be important for later lessons in this unit. So let's dive in and let's look at atomic number. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of take a look at our periodic table. And you can see up here in our first element, we start with one. And then as we go across, remember each row is called a period, then the atomic number goes up to two. And then the next row has three, four, and so on, all the way up to 10. And then the next row starts with 11 and keeps going up to 18 and so on. So you can see that as you go across a period, your atomic number is going up. And as you go down a group, your atomic number is also going up. Okay, so that is kind of our trend in atomic number. So just knowing when you're looking for an element on the periodic table that sometimes knowing the atomic number is useful to finding it. So let's talk about our second trend, which is atomic mass. And if you take a look at the atomic masses, those are found, remember, in the bottom here. So hydrogen's 1.01, helium's 4, and then lithium 6.94, beryllium's 9.01, and so on. And so as you go up in atomic number, your atomic masses also increase. And so atomic mass is increasing as you go across any period, or even when you look down a group, atomic mass is increasing. Finally, let's look at our trends in our valence electrons. Now, this is the one that's most important. And what's useful here is to pause the video, pull out the periodic table where you drew all the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams for elements 1 to 20, and then take a look and see what's happening to the valence electrons. So I want you to pause the video before you continue. Think about that, and let's move on. Okay, so let's take a look then at our periodic table. Now there's a couple of things we can notice here. So let's maybe start by looking down a group. So if we look down this first group here, we've got hydrogen, lithium, sodium, potassium. What we notice is that in each of the valence shells, so that is the last shell that has electrons in our Bohr-Rutherford diagram, each of them have only one electron. If we look going down the next group, each one in its valence shell has two electrons. If we look down boron, it has three valence electrons, silicon 
carbon, they have four, and then nitrogen has one, two, three, four, five. Oxygen has six. Fluorine and chlorine has seven. And then the last row are noble gases. Most of them have eight, except for helium, which has two. In other words, all of these have full valent shells, and that's going to be important when we come back to looking at ions. So you can sort of see as you go down a period, you know, you've got two and two and two electrons in the valent shell as you go down this particular group. And so the number of valence electrons down a group is the same and it increases as we go across the periodic table. Now let's take a look going across a row or a period. And what you can notice here is that we've got two in the first shell, one in the second shell, and then we've got two and two, two and three, two and four, two and five, two and six, and so on all the way up to two and eight. So in this period, the number of shells is two, but the valence electrons are going up. If we look above it, we have one shell and the valence numbers are going up. If we look down in the next one, we have three shells and the number of electrons in the valence shell is going up. And then we can look in the next row and we've got four. So you can see that going across a period, the number of valence electrons is going up and the number of shells remains the same. And how many shells there are depends on which row in the periodic table there is. So that's it to our trends. Um, we're done with this video. Let's move on to our next task.